Hello and welcome to another SH Figuts review. Today we're talking at the real bone version of Kamen Rider Beast. This came out of nowhere, came out quite quickly. I was like, hey, we're still waiting for other O's and Cougar and stuff, but hey, look, here's Beast. Uh, not even like a display or anything, it's just like, hey, it's coming out. So, oh, and here's the, uh, like his arm thing. I was just like, oh, if I'm gonna pay that much for like expensive version of Beast, why wouldn't I not have a complete version of him? Now I never have this with the original Figarts, but I'm gonna compare this Beast with the original Figarts Beast and see how much difference they are. Because as with Wizard, the old one, the original release was garbage. One of the worst SH Figarts release I've ever reviewed. Might be the worst. And the Beast one didn't fare much better, although, uh, I was uh, I already had the shock value taken away with the wizard figure, so I wasn't that upset the piece. Plus, that figure is quite cheap, you know, in terms of SA figure arts. But anyway, so how much does this improve from the original one? Here stands about 15 centimeters, or or at around six inches. If I just bring in the original Beast SH figures, oh my god, look at that. He's like half a head shorter. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's uh, the SH figures wizard line was infamous or famous for being kind of crap uh, in terms of proportions. And especially you see the stomach area. I mean, this belt is almost the same size as that. And, and I guess the leg height is almost inside that, but he's got no stomach. It's just all gone. And the rest of the torso is just like, well, what's going on here? It's squashed. It's miniaturized. Something's wrong here. He's collapsing into himself. As you can see here, even though the legs are around the same height, uh, you know, the belt and hip are on the same area, his hands just go all the way down because he's just got nothing there. With the original Wizard figure, a lot of people have fixed it by just adding a little bit of blue tack in the neck or the hip area just to make him look a little bit taller, but it didn't fix everything, of course. And I've even seen some people take the original gimmick toy line that kids would play around with and use that body on the Wizard figures. Of course, that would mean reducing some of the articulation, but it's sort of like the just getting the best of both worlds and not quite getting there. With Beast, uh, I see no one trying to fix their Beast figure because I guess no one cared. <laughs> so, oh my god. What we've got to talk about is just the coloring. Now, on the black side of things, the original figure is pretty good and it still feels good to the touch right now. It's got that smooth feel to it, nice and matte finish. So the black is actually pretty good. The gold, however, is just, as you see here, he's orange. He's metallic orange and not gold unlike the, the new one. And it's not just the problem with the actual suit coloring, but the belt itself, this is also quite a lot more orange compared to the gold we have on this newer figure there. Now, well, once again on the camera, it's not as noticeable, but this thing is really orange. It's almost like coming around a tangerine or something. Not Gaim orange, but this is, if this was between Gaim and actual beast coloring, he's closer to Gaim, like he's about six and, like five's the middle out of 10, and then he's a bit more six or seven towards Gaim coloring. It's awkward. The eye coloring, this one is a lot more saturated. So in terms of just colors, I like colors a lot. I do like the old eyes compared to the new one. The new one is a bit more of a limeish green color, which again, it is more accurate, but you know, just like, I kind of like this oversaturated green look to the old beast. Starting off with the helmet molding, they're actually very similar. There's probably only about 10% difference between both of these helmets. If this was painted properly, like in the actual gold coloring, you might be mistaken, like if you saw these two heads, be think, oh, they're the same one. There's just subtle hints of lining differencing. Like this one's just a tad bit sharper than the old one, but otherwise they are just very, very similar. Moving down to the torso here, the shoulder pad on both of these are also quite similar. Now this one just has a uh, obvious hinge that they use, whereas the new one actually has the, what well, figures do now is uh, a, there's, there's a little peg and ball peg and swivel on, on the arm so it can move out the way while also not showing off a joint. So hidden shoulder pad joints. More detailing on the line, shoulder pad is actually not bad either. Once again, the, uh, the detailing on the new one is probably just more show accurate and the lining is a bit sharper. Moving down to the torso, this white there is um, a bit shinier than I than what it should be. The V shape on the collar is a bit more noticeable, whereas this one is only noticeable under certain angles, so it's a bit more subtle. Moving over to the back, the torso shape is very different here. They still have the same sort of like diamond shapes and triangles, but they're all shaped and sized differently. 
Moving down to the low arming set, this one's way more saturated than the new one. And the new one also has a little bit of a color, black color wash to make the linings and details pop out a lot more than the old one. The old one is just a flat sort of metallic color over it and relies heavily on shadows for you to see any of the details. Down the legs is the same difference here. Old one, far more exaggerated, but harder to see. New one has nice black lining to tell the difference. With the bottom of the feet, I actually prefer the older one because um, you can notice that the Beast Loco are a lot easier than the new one. The new one, I guess, in order to increase articulation, they sacrifice a bit of that Beast Logo molding. So it looks doesn't look as good as the old one, unfortunately. There's just a too big of a huge cutoff where the toe joint is. With about these things, the first thing you notice that of course the new one is painted much more accurately. It actually has a chrome gold look to it, whereas the old one just uses the same metallic orangey yellow look uh, with like the rest of the suit. You know, another thing is uh, the old one has the rings permanently attached to his hand. You see here it's a blurry mess sort of. And on the side here, you can see it's all just little blurred colors. It looks okay for its time because that is absolutely no competition compared to the new one. The new one has better molding, actual details. You can see what the ring is despite the size of it and extra colors on them as well. What they've done, you actually swap the wings on the hands, which means you can do actually more combinations. Whereas the old beast, one side of the hand is always the beast ring and the other side is always a generic sort of silver blob. Back to the belt itself, the old one does not feature the opening and closing function and because it never closes, the detailing on the back of the silver side of the panels are almost non-existent. Whereas on the new one, you actually have those molded door details there. One bad thing with the new one is that the chrome effect here is not painted too well. It's actually a little bit messed up under certain angles, especially you really tell it wasn't painted on properly. So that's frustrating. In terms of extra detail though, inside here, inside this ring slot, there's actually more detail as the old one is just a flat surface. And there's also a lot sharper detail on the back of the belt when compared to the old one. And with the ring swapping gimmick with these new figure arts, there's a lot more sharper detail there and all these holes there. And of course this piece also soft, just like the old one to move out of the way for you to uh, do different posing. In terms of accessories, aside from the fists already attached to the figure, both of these figures have spray open hands, a pair of relaxed hands, a pair of half relaxed, half spray open hands, and a pair of sword holding hands. The old figure also has a pair of hands that look like the wizard posing hands, two different types of grippy hands, a pair of raving hands, as well as a sort of praying and ready to eat hands. The old figure also has an extra bottle of mayonnaise, which is an accessory that's seriously missing from the new one. I don't mind missing some of the hands too much, but the mayonnaise hands and the both top praying hands, that feels very necessary and it's definitely missing from the new figure. And that's, that's definitely a huge complaint over the old figure. Both figures also come with his signature weapon, his sword, in both short mode and his long sort of fencing mode. In terms of molding details, the old one is a bit more bulky and chunky. Even the lining on the tip there is thicker than the new one. The new one's just more thin and just, I guess, more like, sharper in detail. The old one's also painted incorrectly with that weird orangey look, as well as a huge red line there, which is not on the new one. The new one's just so like chrome and gold. Both of these swords have this spinning dial with the Beast logo, but if you want to swap the uh, dice on the old one, you're gonna have to take it apart. So pull that out. Get the, for example, number six. Another dice, this is number, stick that in there, stick the wheel back on. And there you go, it's rotated. It's got a different number on it. Whereas on the new one, all the numbers are actually hidden in there. So you can just rotate that and get different numbers. Now this is awesome, of course, it's great, you know, for playability and of course you're not going to lose pieces but the downside to this is is that the gap between the surface and the dice is uh, quite significant so it's in terms of screen accuracy just with the dice part the old one is going to look better because the number is closer to the surface so this can become quite annoying other than that this actually has a slot for the ring to go in whereas this is a flat surface articulation head goes back quite a bit forward sideways sideways the lower neck joint doesn't seem to help too much, but this whole movement feels very natural. These shoulder pads are on their own little hinge, move out just a little bit, so arm can go up, 
<laughs> that's like cutting him his own neck. Um, down, full rotation here, like a little rotating joint there, upper arm rotation, double elbow joint, but that gets hindered a bit by that uh, shoulder pad, so there you go. Hands on the ball peg and swivel, torso goes back, forward, sideways, sideways, and uh, full rotation here. Like I said, this is soft enough to move out the way. Yes, these counter as articulation too, but uh, one downside to this is that it does like to fall off a little bit when I move it. Anyway, so I'm just open that back up. Just feels like mine wasn't molded quite correctly. You can get a little bit annoying with these doors. Blessing and a curse, huh? Leg goes up, leg goes back. Oh, quite a lot. Leg goes sideways. Uh, full rotation there, it's actually a ball joint, so there's a little bit of extra articulation there. Knee joint, foot goes up, toe goes up, toe goes, actually toe doesn't go down, so they sacrifice the uh, Beast logo for no reason. Sa feet sideways, and there you go. We have a Beast mantle set, which was sold separately, just like the original one was sold separately and the kiddie version wasn't sold separately because that was like the whole kid toy gimmick. So that's annoying. Uh, I don't have the old one but from the photos I say online I think that's all just done with like hard or soft-ish plastic and you just like move the joints around to create the effect of it like spraying open whereas here it's actually made out of uh, like a stitched together fabric piece. That does come with some problems though, but more on that later. So we have our ball here, very nice metallic red. Uh, see, this piece here is still hard plastic, but it has the fake stitching line around it, so that's kind of cool. And then underneath here, we have uh, these pieces that are actually stitched together. Let's see, uh, well, that's a bit of a damage, just how they stitch it together, but whatever. Uh, there's actually some like wiring going down the side, as well as all the way around it. And if I just extend it out, you can see that like the top part is stitched together very securely, very tightly, so it's not going to have too much movement, whereas all of your actual movement is going to happen at the lower part. It's a nice fake leather texture underneath here, it's sort of not too smooth, but nice black felt touch to it, and printing all around. This is quite decent. So you're definitely going to get a lot of posability out of these things. One articulation here on this cold bit actually goes up and down. So yeah, kind of cool cow thing. Let's see, we have this bird one here, which is got this texture, prints it all the way down. Let's see, a little bit of that problem there where they cut it and stitch it together. So it's probably gonna be on all of these. I'll paint it quite well. Let's see, the dolphin one. Let's see, doesn't have that problem. No, this one's hidden a bit better. Got these wavy lines there. Now this one's the worst one, this green gecko one, which is probably I'm going to use the least, but it's annoying. The way they stitch it together, this green area was actually like stuck. This bit here is actually stuck, like you know when the paint didn't dry yet and they put it together. I tried to cut it apart because, but that still caused some damage, so that, that's really an annoying. Got this gold piece here, this whole gecko thing, got these circles printed on it. And you can't feel the texture, like it's just one single print, so you can't feel any bumps or anything on these. So overall, these look okay. Uh, I wish these were sold as just the same package, because you get a full real bone box, and all it holds is these four mantle things. I feel like these really could have just come with the figure, since the figure itself is also missing hands and mayonnaise that the original one had. So the actual new figure, while it does look better overall, and you know, better proportions, better color, better everything. The figure just looks nicer. It has less accessories and the cost costs more than the original one. So that's, that's annoying. So for me personally, with real bone stuff, unless I really like a certain character, I'm not gonna pick it up, but I'm also considering like collecting all of the main riders as well as the secondary riders. And even though I don't like Beast that much, this one is still a pick up for me because he's a secondary rider. I'm not gonna pick up his like, uh, Beast high performer, whatever if they release that, I'm not interested in those. But as his main form, secondary rider, fine, I'm gonna pick him up.
So that goes the same with all the other secondary riders as well. So I hope they get like upgraded figures because, for example, Kamrider Gills, he would really needs a new figure because he's still that really old, lanky, skinny form. But whatever. Comparing this to the old one, this is way, way better. But the old one does have a little bit of merit for the cheap price that the old one is going for. It's still fine. If you're not a big fan, you can definitely pick that one up. Although he is going to be a bit shorter than your current lineup of figures. And of course, there's still one thing that the old one trumps. This one is the extra Idakimas hand. I hope I said that right. As well as the mayonnaise bottle that this one doesn't have. Like, what the hell, Bandai? Those are like... <laughs> but aside from those two things, this one is better in every other way. So maybe you'd want to just... If you have the old one and you want this one, you maybe take the mayonnaise bottle and that hand and put it in here and then sell the rest or extra cheaper price, maybe? Overall, articulation's pretty good on this figure and it's on right. It, you can get all of his poses in the show, especially that uh, there's this is one image online where he's his butts in the camera and you, you can do that. The coloring on this, for the most part, is okay, but the belt is a little bit messed up and I've seen for other people, that seems to be the case. So have your expectations like on there, that's annoying. The rings, of course, are nice, just like the wizard one. Those are probably the highlight of the figure. The rings look really good, but of course, be careful and try not to lose them. As for this set, is this necessary? Look, if you're gonna pick up Beast at this price, I think, yes, you might as well pay a little bit more to get this. But in terms of quality control, I cannot recommend this. As for quality control, that can be an issue. It's just the way it's manufactured, that sort of shiny, fake, leathery look plastic. When that gets put in the packaging, that has the tendency of gluing itself together. And it's not just mine, it can happen to everyone else. Also, the articulation of this on the shoulder is a little bit annoying. It has a tendency. It's quite hard to pop onto the shoulder and quite easy to pop off, so then get annoyed. So this is really mostly just for posing. If you're gonna move him and play around with the figure with this, you're gonna get angry. As for the posability of this, yes, it is better than the original Fake Outs version. And yes, it is better than the original DX like toy one, because that one has like splits in it, so you don't get a full like round fabric. I think that's how it goes. It's got like different separate pieces to do the different wave effect. So this one is the best looking one and the most articulated one, but you know, do remember that there is gonna be some issues with it. So have your expectations also drawn there. So overall, it is a decent figure art, but for this price, it better damn well be decent. And for its price, I think it doesn't quite reach there. Unless you must have every single secondary rider, I do not recommend picking this up. Unless you must have every single... Unless you must have every single secondary rider in real bone form, then I don't recommend picking this up. So, pick this set pack up if you're picking this up, and only pick this up if you really, really must have all the secondary riders, or you like reader like these. As always, if you found this video useful, please consider clicking the thumbs up button if you haven't done so already, as well as subscribe to this channel for more figure arts, Lego, and camera other toys review on here. You can also support this video via Patreon, or you don't have to do that, just watch my videos with Adblock turned off. I'd appreciate that a lot. As always, take care, have a nice day. I will see you guys soon. Bye bye now.